Hello everybody, my name is Axel and I like to build stuff. A year ago, I found a video by Integza where he tried to make a post jet engine out of plastic. Yeah, it doesn't sound like the smartest thing in the world. The funny thing is, is the fact that it actually, not only did it start, but it also ran for a short period of time. Not satisfied with this short success, he did a follow-up video where he made a pulse jet engine out of carbon fiber. This engine worked pretty well, but it didn't produce a lot of thrust. This is where I stepped in to prove Integza wrong. Because last October, I made a video where I documented my process of using ABS plastic in a full jet engine. The funny thing is, is that it worked for actually quite a long time because of the difference you can see in the sunlight between clips. The problem is, once I started it, it actually melted, causing it to stall out. So here we are, one year later, brand new jet engine, brand new fuel system, and a whole lot more knowledge. Make sure to subscribe because you're in for a treat. I started this project by doing, of course, a little bit of research. And the funny thing is, when I was searching the interwebs, I actually found the very same jet engine Integza used on his video. So after, of course, downloading the plans and spending a painful hour in Fusion 360, because, of course, the plans are an imperial out of all things, I got this. According to the thrust plans, it should produce about two to three pounds of thrust. After printing out all the molds, I then super glued the two tail pieces and the end pipe together, and then also the combustion chamber and the conversion. Then, after that, I just mounted them on a piece of PVC pipe, and then it was time to laminate. So before we start building, I would just like to say the reason why there is so much background noise is because it is legitimately 115 degrees outside. It is no joke. I have a swamp cooler back there that's trying to keep this place cool. I have a fan right here that's trying to keep me cool. But anyway, to the build. So for this, I got four things of fireplace sealant. I have some nitrile gloves that hopefully will protect me from any splinters. I have scissors to cut the carbon fiber, and then I have the carbon fiber right here. On top of that, I also have the custom rig, right here, that's basically two 2x4s two and a PVC pipe screwed into it. And then the mold is right here. So, yeah, all I need to do now is get some, like, some uh, non-stick or some uh, cling wrap of some sort and a paintbrush, and then we'll get building. You never knew, this is my first time ever working with anything in the composite world. I've only worked with sheet metal before. So this is, yeah, this is, this is definitely new. Alrighty. There's carbon fiber. Well, if I should put on this. Carbon fiber right here. Woo! Okay, so now, just need to measure everything out. Okay, you're gonna have to blow out my face. This is too ridiculous.
Alright, so it is the next day. Um, the jet engine is pretty hard uh, right now. But I know one thing, and Tegs that never showed in the video, and that it clearly states on the side of these bottles, is that you're supposed to heat cure it. Now, before I go over and put this in my grill to be able to actually cure it properly, I still need to cut off the excess. So let's quickly do that. later I then pulled the jet engine off the grill and it was time to work on the fuel system right so I just got the jet engine finished built sorry I didn't catch uh, the end cap or the intakes on camera I'm sorry about that I did lose storage space so I have the jet engine right here but now I need to do the fuel system and for the fuel system I have a few components first I have this needle valve right here that is then connected to the propane tank adapter, and it's only one of the uh, one pound propane tanks, so hopefully it, w it shouldn't even be regulated. And then that goes off into this T screws in, just like this. And then I have two compression fittings. These two pieces of, I believe they're copper tubing, but I already bent them to shape um, using a very old technique of bend it with your thumbs and hope it doesn't actually uh, break off. But so I'm hoping the fuel lines can go like this and then they'll meet up right here for the T connector. So let's uh, get that all connected up and then yeah, it's time to test it. Alrighty, here's the first test of the fuel system. I got the propane tank right here, got the valve. Let's see if this thing uh, actually works. I am gonna squish the ends of the pipe before I actually put it in the jet engine. But I guess here we go. Well, I'd say that works just fine. Tad bit excited for this test. Alrighty. Let's go test an engine. Okay, so I'm out here. I've got the engine butted up against this brick, so hopefully it shouldn't be going anywhere. I've got it propped on iron dumbbells and clamped in a vise so that it doesn't move side to side. I've got the fuel system right here. I'm probably gonna tape it down before we start. And then I got a half full propane tank right here. So, woo, I'm excited. Also, if you, if you remember from last year, I used this, which was a, uh, basically all gas no brakes solution where you press it and it'll go full throttle this year I actually got a proper blow gun that actually you know blows at different variations so yeah let's see if we can get this engine to run alrighty there we go woo I'm excited also, before you guys yell at me in the comments to fl flip this thing upside down and to preheat the fuel lines, I say nay, nay. Because what happened to Integza is when he lined his fuel line through the combustion chamber, he ended up actually melting through his fuel lines. Hopefully I don't do that. <laughs> Woo! Okay. Air. Okay, that was too much. Okay, there we go. Yeah! 
closest I've ever been to starting up an engine. Since I didn't want to break the engine, but also wanted to start it, I then hopped on a call with Integza to ask him actually how to start an engine. Sadly, because of course I am a professional idiot, I wasn't recording, but what he said went around the lines of something like this. So when you're starting the engine, you should blow a little bit of air in until the first pulse, which pulls the fireball in. Then you want to add a proportional amount of air and fuel slowly until it starts to make a similar sound to this. At that point, you want to give it a tad bit of fuel and give it a pop of air and it should come right to life. With this new advice from a professional, I then hopped back outside with a bit more confidence and tried starting the engine. That's two. something a little bit weird about how the fuel system seemed to be almost like fouling out because whenever I'd have the compressed air at the intake, it would run just fine. It'd get up to that beautiful purring noise, no issues at all. But then as soon as I got it pulsing, I would try and remove the compressed air and then it would bog down as if it's getting flooded like in a petrol engine. So I, I don't know what's going on there. Uh, if you guys know how to fix that, please let me know in the comments so then I can fix this engine and actually build something with it. 
If you guys like this video, please make sure to leave a like down below and also please comment your future video ideas in the comments. This video was heavily inspired by last year's comments on the last video. Thank you so much to everybody who gave me advice on that. Also, I have a goal of reaching 1,000 subs by the end of the year, and if you want to support me and the projects I make here, please consider subscribing, as only 7% of you guys are actually subscribed, and it would seriously help me out. Also, if you want to build this engine yourself, I'll have the plans, 3D printer files, and all the components I used in the video description down below. Thank you very much to Integza for giving me that advice. And on that good note, it's sadly time to end this video. I'd like to thank every single one of you guys very much for watching. It means the world to me. And I'll see you in the next video project. Goodbye.